We thank all of you for being present, for being here, especially our uh, speakers specifically, who are also going to represent on March 31st for the, for the TEDx presentation of Prime Minister Amon. And so now we just want to focus a little bit more on the Aruba portion. So as many of you already know, on March 31st, our our Prime Minister, Mr. Mike Amon, will be presenting TEDx Binnenhof. This day represents a very important day for Aruba because on this day we will have the unique opportunity to share the vision of our island, not only with the Netherlands, but with the entire world. As you just heard from Mr. Stolso, we're talking billions of people, not millions, but billions. So we are very excited about that. And on this day, 44 Dutch embassies, together with partners around the world, will be watching TEDx Binnenhof. More than 3,800 viewing parties will be held, and it is exactly for this reason that we are here today. Today is the day that we announce that Aruba is also hosting a viewing event, and that viewing event will take place on March 31st from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and we will be hosting our TEDx Binnenhof viewing right here at Casticultura. We will have several well-known speakers from the field of sustainability and innovation. Our speakers are going to be Mr. Ryan Oduber, seated to my right, as well as architect Mr. Luis Huertas, who is not able to be here with us today. To my left, we have Professor Dr. Ryan Peterson, as well as Mr. Glenn today, who is also not able to be here, but they represent the University of Aruba. And in addition to that, we have Susie Maduro from CETAR, seated to my left. And, as, and of course, we cannot forget our Minister of Economic Affairs, Mr. Mike de Mesa. And so after the presentations are made, we will be live streaming our Prime Minister's TEDx Binnenhof's presentation to later follow with a panel discussion consisting of these individuals. And that will happen on March 31st. So before I, I ask the speakers to give a, a little bit of information as to the role they're going to play on March 31st and specifically what topics they're going to cover, I just want to take an opportunity to thank Casticultura, first and foremost, CETAR, Aruba Tourism Authority, Aruba Investment Agency, the University of Aruba, Day Bay Bay, Ministerie van Economische Zaken, Ministerie van Algemene Zaken, as well as the Bureau Innovatie. So we just want to thank all of you for your roles, your input, your support of this event that's coming up on March 31st. And so I don't, we don't have the representative for Casi Cultura with us right now, who is Mr. Jonathan Vieira, but he, he the, Casi Cultura, of course, is a major partner in this event. So what I would like to do is I would like to ask Susi Maduro of CETAR to just tell us a little bit about the role that CETAR is playing with this event. Well, for CETAR, as the number one national telephone company and telecommunications company of Aruba, it's a great pleasure and honor because this is an opportunity not only for our company but for Aruba to shine and give information to the whole world about even we are a small, tiny island in the Caribbean, so many things innovative and in different ways we're looking at the world and to make it a better place. And I think our Prime Minister will do a great job because um, he is very inspiring. So I hope this event will inspire others, other islands too, and that we will be, you know, giving an example for the rest of the world. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much, Susie. Thank you. I'd also like to ask uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Ryan Peterson if uh, maybe you can just share with us a little bit about the role you're going to play and the subject matter that you are going to discuss. All right. Thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. For me, it's a pleasure and an honor uh, to be here today, but also be able to share some thoughts with you on March 31st on you know, solutions towards sustainability. Um, for the past 10 years, uh, scientists across the globe have been looking for solutions. We understand the challenges that we have, and oftentimes those challenges are even bigger for small island states. My presentation will focus 
on how small island states through certain mechanisms, particularly through society and ecological policies and programs, can overcome these uh, environmental ecological challenges that they have in order to improve the sustainability. And particularly, I'll be looking at reviewing, let's say, in about 10 minutes, 10 years of research in about 10 bullet points on the, the solutions that seem to work, and with a particular emphasis, actually, on how we go from the global challenge that we have to the local solutions and what these local solutions mean for other societies. And there are a couple of surprises and discoveries we made actually throughout those studies that we did, uh, outlining uh, the habits and how you break those old habits and how you instill the resilience and the innovation to develop a more sustainable uh, society. And those lessons that we've learned here in Aruba based on our studies here are quite enlightening if you compare that to other studies conducted in larger countries. So by this, an invitation to everyone to, uh, to assist and attend. And congratulations to Aruba, obviously, for achieving this great milestone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. And now we'd like to turn it over to Ryan Odubad. Uh, Mr. Odubad is the director of an organization called Aldea. And if you could just maybe tell us a little bit about what your organization um, does and also the role that you are going to play as a speaker for us on March 31st. Um, hi, um, thank you for having us, me here. Um, Aldea um, stands for uh, Artistic, Artistic Lab for Design, uh, Architecture and uh, Ecology. Uh, we, we should see it as a village. Uh, our approach, um, how we want to see uh, Aruba Island Nations is based on from the, from the inside out. So first um, we access, assess what we have from there on, we build houses, we build uh, uh, greeneries, and, uh, and all together we, um, we bonded with education. And the strongest one is art. So art would be the, the glue between all those uh, facets, facets. And I guess um, uh, what we all always, when we, when we see the old houses, the urban houses, and we see the new houses, there's always this um, question of why don't we make it like they used to? thick walls, um, we uh, use local materials. So that's, that, that's going to be one of our main uh, uh, objectives, how to build with solely, purely local materials, no import. Very good, Very good. excellent, excellent. And of course there's those, the, the way we build the old houses, right? It was so that the breeze could just flow through and yes. keep the place cool. Uh, excellent. Low, low, uh, uh, low impact and passive, uh, passive energy. Yeah. Yes, and this all leads towards Aruba's goal of sustainable, 100% sustainability by the year 2020, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Odebert. And then lastly, on our panel, we have our minister, Mike de Mesa. And if you would maybe share with uh, the members of the press that are present today, Minister de Mesa, a little bit about uh, TEDx, the event, and your take on it and the representation of Prime Minister Amon in TEDx. Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, to start with, it's an honor for Aruba to be on a TEDx on the 31st of March coming up. Um, it's going to be wonderful, very inspiring. Um, the world is going to be um, able to listen to our Prime Minister, who's a visionary, who believes very much in sustainability and also how you would work towards converting uh, progress to well-being, the well-being of um, the society. Um, it is very important. Many places you listen and you see um, progress, and yet the well-being is not carried on to everyone in the society. And that's something very important. And therefore, it is never sustainable. We believe very much in the sustainable envelope of the community as a whole, everything we do in our economy, um, in our way of living, and we are very much focused in that um, direction. As a matter of fact, um, the Prime Minister believes very much in quality versus um, quantity. For many years, Aruba, for example, concentrated very much on quantity in everything, looking at the gross domestic product, the GDP, yes. um, doing a calculation how we should increase that number. And yet, if you look at a certain moment, it doesn't really have a marginal benefit to the people, to the community, to everyone that living on the island. And we have um, taken the decision 
to concentrate more on quality, quality for everyone in the island. So when you have progress, you should share that with everyone. And finding sustainable solutions. Um, in 2012, our Prime Minister, together with uh, Mr. Richard Branson, in Brazil, Sao Paulo, um, announced um, that Aruba has a target for the year 2020 to be 100% um, sustainable. Only alternative energy, sustainable energy. And we're focusing on that. As a matter of fact, we can say by the end of year 2015, we should have our um, demand supplied by 50% of alternative energy. And working then towards the next um, five years, it's gonna be a tough job. But um, we, we are working on that to make Aruba by the year 2020 100% um, um, ready for sustainable energy, which is very important because the economy is driven by energy. And um, everyone knows um, what is happening in the world um, when it comes to petroleum, fossil fuels, and so on, and all the problems that this um, you know, is causing um, throughout the world and the challenges ahead of us um, for the future 10, 20, 30 years. So Aruba is walking um, towards that direction to become a green island completely, 100% uh, by the year 2020. Um, during the last five years, we already um, dropped our uh, CO2 emissions by almost 50%. So um, this, is, this is very ambitious. Um, there are a lot of countries that are also looking at what Aruba is doing, and we're gonna keep leading that envelope and pushing it for the year 2020, and we're gonna be sharing this with the rest of the world. So it's gonna be a great opportunity to listen to our Prime Minister, who, like I say, is a visionary on this, believes very strongly in it, very inspiring, very motivating to listen to him and, and, and learn his vision and what we are making um, in Aruba to become a reality. So I would invite everyone on the 31st of March to around the world to be part of this. Like you said, right here in um, Casa Cultura in Aruba, we'll have the sessions. We'll be listening to some great speakers. Professor Dr. Um, Peterson is one. Um, I guess we'll have Odi Bear also there, right? Yes. yes, and we'll have also the, um, the top guy of the university also, um, Mr. Today, and some other people. Um, so it's gonna be great. And, and, and in Den Haag, it's, it's gonna be wonderful. Um, it's gonna be great. I would encourage everyone to be part of this. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Minister de Mesa. Minister de Mesa is not only our Minister of Economic Affairs, but also of Energy. And as you can hear from the speakers this morning, they are all very excited, very proud that Aruba is going to be part of TEDx Binnenhof on March 31st, that Prime Minister Amon has been invited to be a speaker at that event, says a whole lot about the respect that the world has for the small island nation called Aruba. So I would also like to add my invitation with the others to all of Aruba, Pueblo de Aruba. This is an opportunity for you to come to Casticultura on March 31st from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. It is complimentary free. You do, there is no cost involved for you to be part of it. And so please, if you would send an email to Jenire, J-E-N-I-R-E-E -E -E dot Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z -E at gmail.com. Again, it's Jenire dot Gonzalez at gmail.com. Please to reserve your seat for that important event. Come out and support Prime Minister Amon as he represents Aruba on March 31st. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.